It's the exact same as, as a woman. If you give her the attention in the right quality, in the right quantity, and she's going to blossom and she's going to open up. Go up and hug your wife before the kids, mm -hmm. right? And the kids mm -hmm. run up to you and try to hug you to say, one moment, I'd love to see you guys one moment. Mommy gets the first kiss or whatever you want to say. Show her that she is the queen, the queen of your house. You're the king, but she is the queen and she gets your first priority. Mm, I love that. Gentlemen, do you ever wonder what the number one currency for women is? Well, today, Tim Matthews and I are going to talk about that. And not only the number one currency, but how you can actually use this to your advantage to not only make your wife feel better, but also to deepen your relationship. Once again, we're back with Tim Matthews. Tim, great to have you here, brother. Oh, brother, it's great to be here. It's yeah. been a long time. It has been a long time. It's been a long time. I think I've been here since October. Yeah. And it's now, what, uh, July? It is. Missed it. Yeah, well, we missed like having home. you here. Yeah, it feels great to be back. Well, today we want to talk about the number one currency, and that number one currency for women is? Attention. So let's talk about attention. Why is it the number one currency for women? Well, there's a lot of things that happen, right? When you give a woman attention, we've spoken on the show before about validation and collecting berries and the impact that has for a woman on being able to decompress, feel emotionally seen, emotionally safe. But if we just zoom out from that, they're all, they're all examples of ways to give attention. But ultimately, when you actually, underst as a guy, when you understand the importance of attention and what it does for a woman, you're able to then uh, play with the facets of attention and really leverage them in uh, the varying ways they work. So let's talk about those facets. Mm -hmm. How exactly do I give my wife attention without seeming needy or with a lot of the ways guys come across of following it around? You're not talking about that kind of attention, right? Good point. No, definitely, <laughs> definitely <laughs> not. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a trap a lot of guys fall into. It is. Right? That yeah. they hear the need to give attention and then they do it in a way that is often inauthentic to them. Um, so one of the ways you could do it with your wife, which I see you do very well with Aaron. Thank you. Is just active listening, right? Which in itself is validation. So for example, oftentimes guys will take any little bit of attention they can get from their wife. So let's say the guy is on his phone and the wife then comes in and wants to talk to him, maybe because they've been in a a tricky situation for a little while. He just takes the opportunity, but he's actually present. So he might keep his phone in his hand. He may be looking at her, then looking at his phone. His his thumb might continue to move as he kind of scrolls a little bit, as he's a bit preoccupied. In that space, he's not really practicing any active listening. And in in theory, what he could should do is if he wants to engage with his wife at that time, then put his phone down and actually take a breath. <laughs> get present and begin to collect berries like we've spoken about in the past. Or equally, if it isn't a good time for him, just say, hey, no, this isn't a good time, but I want to hear what you've got to say. Just give me 10 minutes, then let's talk about this. But either way, the point is the guy has to get present and be fully engaged to then practice active listening for the woman to feel like the attention is quality attention. Yeah, so what we're talking about here is not following your wife around or making her the priority or, or being needy. Because a lot of guys that are listening to this either don't know it or have become aware that they go into deer mode. They defend, they excuse, mm -hmm. they explain, they react. And they react to their wife's energy. And if things are off in the marriage, they'll, they'll consistently, quote, give their wife attention. But the attention they're giving her is more like, hey, are you still in love with me? Do you still want to be married mm -hmm. to me? things like that that come across as really low valued, mm -hmm. very needy energy. And what we're talking about here is giving your wife your focus. Focus could be another word that could be on with attention so that she knows that she's a priority in your life. She knows that when she needs to talk to you about something, and it doesn't have to be every time, but you are gonna give her your attention or you're gonna at least let her know, hey, this is not the right time. So an example of that, just to give clarification to the men, is um, I might be working at my desk. My wife comes down, she starts talking about the kids or something her girlfriend or one of her coaching clients is going through. I say, hey, babe, 
I'd love to hear about this. Right now I'm in the middle of something. Let's let's, re, let's come back in 30 minutes, come back in an hour, let's come back tonight, whenever it is, and I'd love to hear more. And it's as simple as that. Unfortunately, what a lot of guys do is they react to that situation. They either stop everything they're doing or they'll go, uh-huh, and they'll keep working while she's talking. That's a big one. Mm-hmm. And the third thing they might do is snap. Okay, can't you see I'm working right now? Geez, you know, mm-hmm. something along those lines. And so either of those three will in <laughs> those three that I just mentioned will leave your bedroom a desert. Like you're not having intimacy. You're not getting laid if you do those three. However, the one that you're talking about, Tim, the fourth one is choosing to completely give your wife your undivided attention or reschedule for a time you can. Yeah, you make a great point. You know, I think about the alpha decompression routine. Yep. It's one of the reasons why we give the guys that routine, right? Because um, it's the same with the kids as well. Obviously it works in a different way, but they finish up their work day. The guy finishes up his work day. And before he goes in the house, he wants to shift his state. We've spoken about using triggers and signs. like, And we've seen that decompression routine work really well for the guys. The guys just swear by it. Um, but so they can do exactly what you've just said. Give that focus give that quality attention because attention is the number one thing that women want from a guy. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's a very, it's a very important currency. So if you give your attention too cheaply by being needy, your attention then becomes devalued. Equally, if you are on a mission or a purpose, it's very attractive to a woman because they want the attention from you. But because you were saying no, I'm doing this thing, I'm I'm going over here, they often want it more. Now, obviously, there's a balance within those two things. Absolutely. Right? But it's when you understand the currency you're dealing with, and you know, in today's world, attention is the one thing that everybody's vying for, right? Mm-hmm. And it's the one thing that's often uh, diminishing over time. So if you're able to leverage your attention, it can really help you stand out. Yeah, what you're reminding me of is a conversation I recently had with a woman who happens to be a business owner. And um, I was in a group setting and another woman said, oh, how'd you meet your husband? And she said, oh, we actually met in Vegas. I go, okay, that's an interesting thing. Hmm. And she started talking about, yeah, well, I met him and he was kind of like all over me. We're in a kind of a group setting. And, it, and she was like, I'm not, I have no interest in this guy. The next day he ignored her and she said, uh-uh. And she said, I'm going to marry this guy. She mm-hmm. literally switched in 24 hours for I want nothing to do with this man to I'm going to marry this man. And she said it. She looked at me and goes laughingly. She said, I want to make sure that I had all of his attention. And that was, it's, it's on par with what you're talking about. Now you can play with this a little bit in your, mm-hmm. your relationship. But what I want the guys to get from that story is, hey, your woman still wants to be courted she wants to be like you were dating when you were dating there was mystery you know she didn't know you know what you were doing all the time she didn't know you know who you were with she there was an air of mystery now i'm not saying you have to put that kind of air of mystery into your relationship but you want some kind of mystery some kind of of thought provoking uh thing where she's thinking about you and then when you're with her and you're present with her Mm -hmm. she is your queen she gets your attention yeah definitely um, I can remember when I first got with Amelia mm-hmm. and same thing happened. I wasn't, I didn't know this back then and I wasn't trying to leverage this tactic, if you want to call it a tactic, but uh, I was just very clear with her for the first six months. I'm like, hey, um, I'm cool with us meeting up every now and then, but I don't want a relationship. I've got something I'm working on. I'm going over here and I'm good. Mm-hmm. And um, it came out <clears throat> later on that she obviously was incredibly pulled in by that and attracted by it because yeah. naturally she wanted what she couldn't have, right? It was the opposite of being very needy uh, from an attention standpoint. So um, it's it's huge. It's, at the same time, if you're a guy whose attention is elsewhere in terms of sexual market value and being a high value man who's got things going on in his life and, ha- and has important things going on in his life and he's taking care of things and, and so on, it therefore would mean that you don't, your attention is on other things as well. Whereas if it isn't, you do have things going on and she's the the only focus in your life. And again, I can imagine how this might come across to some of the guys who are in the business and think, oh, well, I'm doing that. I've got my focus and attention on my business. So surely that should be appealing to her. Well, 
like you said, there's going to be a balance, right? If you're going to go and have your attention, you focus on your business during the day, then when you get home, hence tapping the sign, shifting gears, decompression, you better make sure that same quality of attention you give your business, you're able to then give your wife when you walk into the door. Because when you give her that quality attention, she's going to want more of it as well. Because you're able to make her feel seen and heard if you do it right in ways that nobody else will. And she wants that. Yeah, she wants the attention from you. Yeah. Um, so some, how do you do it, right? How, how can you actually give your wife that attention? Let's talk about that. An obvious one that comes to mind is uh, regular date nights. Yeah. Sounds cliche, sounds easy to do. Also easy not to do. Very <laughs> few people do it. Um, but taking a lead on that and being realistic with what you can do, maybe it's once every two weeks, maybe whatever it may be, it's 30 minutes. You and Aaron, I'll just grab 30 minutes, mm -hmm. right? And just have a coffee and sit and talk. Um, not necessarily a date per se, but it kind of is like a mini date. It's mm -hmm. quality time. You've got undivided focused attention. Um, so I think that's one of the ways it's really important for the, the listeners, if they're not doing it, to just begin to leverage. How can I create those meaningful moments of undivided attention, be it through a date night, be it through a coffee, be it through whatever, where my intention is to give my attention so that I can foster that feeling of being for my wife to be seen and heard and connect. Yeah, and for guys listening to this, if you're new, we do have a free uh, downloadable on how to plan the perfect date night. Mm. It gives you icebreaker questions, all kinds of things, regardless of where you're at in your marriage. Uh, make sure you get that. We'll put a link uh, in the description for you guys so you can pick up that free resource. And I think also the importance about this date night is that she wants you to plan it. And guys, this is what I learned. That means she wants you to call the babysitter if you need to, schedule the babysitter, right? A lot of women take that on. And most guys I talk to, they don't even have the phone number of their babysitter. Get the babysitter set up, get the restaurant reservation, you know, get all of those things aligned. And what my wife would say is she wants you to help her pick out the clothes. In other words, hey, why don't you wear that sexy dress? Or, mm -hmm. hey, what I want you to do is dress really casual today or whatever it is. Give her some feedback so you're leading her on this journey. And I also keep, when I do date nights, Tim, I keep an air of mystery in it, right? So my wife doesn't always know what we're doing. And that, again, that just helps me keep, mm. keep things fresh and keep things alive. But she knows that she's getting my attention even when we're not on date night because she knows I'm thinking of her to plan this with her. Key point, which is one of the next ones I was going to mention, because it doesn't always need to be a big thing like a date night. You can do small gestures of attention. Like, for example, if you know your wife's favorite coffee and you go into a coffee shop and you're thinking she might want one, just grab one for her, right? Bring it back. It's that little thing of letting her know that, oh, he's thinking of me. Yep. I'm on his mind. Hey guys, I wanted to interrupt this episode because it's dawned on me that many of you guys aren't aware that we actually have a book on how to save your marriage without talking about it. Now, thousands of men have read it, they've reviewed it, and I wanna give you the opportunity to do the same. If you're interested in grabbing it, it's a short read, but it's helped a lot of men just like you. And maybe you're not interested in the activation method yet, but this is a small entry point that can really turn things around for you. Go over on Amazon. We have it priced as cheap as Amazon will let us. And that way you have a resource that you can use right now to start getting some results in your marriage. Now let's get back to the episode. As you know, I recently um, put myself through a 21 day challenge with Amelia of finding one, one way every day to show her that I love her in a way that's meaningful to her. Now, those ways that are meaningful to her are acts of service and quality time. Now, acts of service don't come naturally to me. Really? <laughs> so, that's shocking. <laughs> the thing, it was tough. It was tough. And it was that thing of quickly and easily doing acts of service without being asked. That was the key, without being asked. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So looking for those opportunities, let's say, you know, simple things like, so we're in the kitchen, she walked over to the sofa and she forgot her water. And I could see it instead of just seeing it and not registering like I would have done. I said, oh, she's forgot. So I'd pick it up and take, hey, you forgot this. And it was incredible. Those tiny little gestures, so easy to do, so easy not to do. Um, the impact that they made, that compounded effect of that 21 day period, the connection was just another level from that tiny thing. Great job. Tiny. Great it, job. Yeah, it was tough. Yeah. <laughs> got today seven, wow, this is easy. Got today like 
15. I'm like, shit, this, <laughs> what am I going to do? This is hard. Because <laughs> then you start doing all those other things automatically, right? So yeah. the opportunities start to reduce. Yeah. So you have to then think of other things and stay very present, stay very attuned. Luckily, I have the community of guys who I said, right, I'm going to post a video to you guys every day to hold myself accountable, which I did. And because I knew I had to post that video, I therefore it stayed top of mind. Yeah. And I therefore found a way within that day. And some days it got to 10 p.m., but I pulled it out right at the end. <laughs> but point being, it doesn't have to be a date night. It doesn't have to be something big. It could be a small gesture that can have a profound impact. I love it. Love it. What's something else the guys can do? Daily check-ins, mm -hmm. um, different ways to do it. Different guys like different ways. It, that, again, could be very simple. It could be a, one sentence, right? I've seen you do it with Erin. Just go up to her. You can sense she's maybe feeling a certain way or she's had the kids all day or whatever. You might put your hand on the small of her back and look her in the eyes and just say, hey, how are you doing? Mm -hmm. And she feels that you mean it, right? Yep. It's an example of a very simple check-in. Very easy to do, very easy not to do. Yeah, it makes a big difference. Yeah, we've talked about several different styles of check-ins on this show. Um, one that I do, one that you do. Andy Tor and I did a podcast on how he launches his partner every day. Um, and then they, they bring each other wherever they are in the world. So it can be super, super simple. Just real quick, I'm going to give a simple one to the guys just so they have a one nugget. And I'm not saying this is the best way to say this is a simple way. My wife and I will say, hey, what's your intention for the day? Mm. And really what it is is a bid for connection, you know, mm -hmm. and kind of, hey, what's the intent? What intent do you have? And the reason I like that for her, one, is it's really easy. Mm -hmm. But two, it sets the tone for the day. You're kind of saying, here's what mm. I want out of the day. Not what are you going to do? What are the actions you're going to do? But what's the intent? And uh, it allows us to really understand where the, each person's coming from and the energy space they're in. Mm. Gives you a great opportunity as well at the end of the day to check in on that thing. Yeah. Absolutely. Super easy. Yeah. What's another one we got here, Tim? So we've covered the date nights, covered the small gestures, covered the, the check-ins. How about the hidden motives or active listening? Yeah. So a way to to reassure her that you she knows she has your attention. Mm -hmm. There's one thing, well, guys, we are great at pretending that we're listening, right? And you're thinking about the football game or whatever else is going on. And while she's talking, and you hear this like the cartoons, wah, 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 the old Charlie <laughs> Brown thing uh, going in the background, and she knows you've checked out. Yeah. Whereas if you can do active listening, or what I like better is even the hidden motives, right? If you can use that within the conversation, mm. now you can get a depth of connection that's at a whole new level. Mm. Yeah. If you can get in the habit as well of um, maintaining some kind of curious frame. Mm-hmm. Within that, right? Because um, years ago, it used to be very easy for me to use hidden motives. And the guys fall into this trap and they go, mm hmm, what else? Hmm, okay, tell me more. And as they get as they le those levels to the game, right? And as they level up, they advance from not just kind of holding space and collecting berries to then engaging in curious questions to really find out more about the experience of their wife with whatever it is she's sharing. And I've found ways of doing that with Amelia. You're really good at that. <clears throat> I think you do a good job of it. Um, again, for me, <laughs> to work a bit more at it. But when I ask Amelia those questions from a place of genuine curiosity, because I'm genuinely interested, it, it just opens more and more and more. Yeah, I mean, who doesn't want... Everybody likes their own story. Everybody likes to talk mm. about it, right? Dale Carnegie's How to Win Friends and Influence People book a classic, but that's what it's about. Like you get curious about people. That's how people start to like you, mm. right? The same thing happens with your partner. Mm, yeah, great point. But again, all this stuff is very easy to do. Yeah. Very easy not to do. Yeah. Um, again, <clears throat> I know we say this a lot on the show, but I think the power of who you surround yourself with, like going back to the challenge that I put myself through, I've got the guy. Well, we've got the guys. Yep. Right? Steel sharp and steel. Um, obviously, the listeners have this show. Uh, they could go into the Facebook community and choose to do any of these things and, and post videos or pictures, questions, posts, whatever. I'm really curious about how many people actually listening to this or watching this are actually going to take action on it. Yeah. Yeah, that's an interesting point because I know I used to go from one show to another show to another show, you know, 10 plus years ago until I realized that, hey, listen to one thing, 
take action. Mastery is the better better than volume, right? By mm. any means. One thing I want to give up is an interesting point, Tim. At least I think it's interesting. Um, is if you're not giving your wife this currency, your partner this currency, this currency is being attention. Mm -hmm. Some she's going to find it from somebody else. One hundred percent. So if she's not getting that currency, that and I want to keep using the currency as the analogy, your that bank account is over withdrawn probably, mm -hmm. right? And so then she's going to have somebody else fill that bank account. Now it could be a girlfriend, could be her parents, could be her ex-boyfriend in high school, the guy on, you know, uh, Facebook or Instagram or whatever else it may be. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, guys, we see this so much. We have literally thousands of men inquire about our flagship program, the activation method every month. And over there, we get to hear a lot of these men's stories, where they're at. And the guys that we accept into the program, you know, for those guys, we get to get a much deeper level. Mm. And a lot of men are doing what they think is the best thing. Hey, I'm providing for my family. I'm putting my head down. I'm working my ass off. I'm doing so many things. Only to look up and find out their wife is having an affair, emotional or otherwise, or has already had one. And she is checked out because there's been no attention. The bank is withdrawn, is overdrawn. You know, there's no overdraft here. And she's had to find that attention to fill her cup elsewhere. Mm. Or arguably worse, she withers. Yeah. She just kind of withers away like a flower that doesn't get watered, gets no sunlight. And a lot of the guys, the other side to that story with the guys we work with is the women end up becoming depressed. Mm -hmm and anxious and just a complete f version of themselves that they just don't even ex recognize and they'd lack confidence and they lack any degree of energy really in many ways and it's equally as hard to pull for the guys to pull their wife back from that place as it is the other place it can be can be done quickly but the journey isn't easy and it, but it all comes back to this piece of attention right if they're not getting it because they need it, going back to that flower piece. If you if you water a flower, if you put it in sunlight and you just like nurture the soil, it it flourishes, it blossoms, it opens up. It's the exact same as, as a woman. If you give her the attention in the right quality, in the right quantity, and she's gonna blossom and she's gonna open up. And that bank account is gonna have a very healthy balance so that when you do come to make a withdrawal, maybe you initiate sex or you want to go on a boys weekend or whatever, she naturally wants to give those things to you because she feels so full from what you were giving to her. I love it. I love it. This is such an important thing for men to learn mm. on, on how to do this. Um, let's give the guys a couple action steps to take out of here so they feel, so these men can actually take this home and practice regularly. Uh, like yourself, right? For a lot of guys starting out, you know, this may feel awkward. This may not feel as easy the first few times because you're in an old pattern, old habit. And like yourself, Tim, we were talking about what you did with Amelia, the 21 day challenge. Mm. What can these men do that are listening to this right now? Maybe they could do that 21 day challenge. Um, you know, that was just 21 days of finding a way every day to show Amelia that I loved her in a way that was meaningful to her. Um, and the two ways that I know are meaningful to her, like I say, are acts of service without being asked and quality time, yeah. um, both of which denote attention, right? So um, not easy. It's quite a big thing for the guys to do, honestly, because if you miss a day, you're going to have to start again back at zero. Um, I have since started another challenge with Amelia that I haven't yet completed. I have had to start back a couple of times on that one, but I think that would be a biggie. Like yep. if the guy just got that habit in place for 21 days, it could change it could change the entire relationship. Yeah. And one of the things I always want to make sure the guys know is don't tell your wife that you're doing this. No. <laughs> no. No this, way. This is a 21 day challenge for you. If you have a community of other men, whether it be within TPM or outside, mm -hmm. utilize that. As you mentioned before, we do have a free community on Facebook mm -hmm. that you guys, anybody can join. Um Go ahead and go check that out, and you can find a, a group of guys there. Alumni, guys in the programs have been through our programs. You guys all know the private community that we have off of Facebook. You guys can utilize that as your source. Another thing that I'm thinking, Tim, in this idea of how do you apply this attention, like what's one thing that somebody can do, 
Um, I think what you want to do here is really practice with other people as well, mm. right? If you are doing this thing we think of as multitasking, you're not doing it right. You're task switching. We've all heard this, mm -hmm. but just completely focus, right? Just take the time to take a breath, count to five, and just listen, right? And you'll get the reps in. That mm -hmm. is the key. You will get the reps in. And when you talked about the decompression, right? We have the thing we teach the guys, mm -hmm. the alpha decompression. You can add this in. I, like I have one of the guys I work with, he does his uh, alpha decompression on the drive home. Mm -hmm. yeah. right? You got to modify and fit things in your schedule. But part of that is I have him walking, when he walks in the door, like a sign, he touches the part of the door, right? As he, It's an anchor. So he's mm -hmm. anchoring himself, grounding himself. And then if he, I don't have him doing this, but what he could do if this was the thing we were focusing on is he could say, what's one way in which I could show my wife that mm -hmm. she has got, she's, attention's one thing, but she's the most important thing to me in this moment, mm -hmm. right? Go up and hug your wife before the kids, mm -hmm. right? And the kids mm -hmm. run up to you and try to hug you to say one moment, I'd love to see you guys one moment, mommy gets the first kiss or whatever you want to say. Show her that she is the queen, the queen of your house. You're the king, but she is the queen and she gets your first priority. Mm, I love that. Yeah, I love that. Awesome. I love this topic, man. Thanks for bringing it to the table. It's yeah. great to have you back in the saddle. Oh, I love it. Love being here. Yeah. Gentlemen, as we always say in the moment of insight, take massive action. We've given you a number of action tips. What's the 21 day challenge, whether you're doing your decompression or whether you're just actively listening and pausing and listening to your wife. There's a lot of gold here that Tim gives you. So I want you guys to actually pick one of these and drive it home. Gentlemen, make it an amazing week and we'll see you next time on the TPM show.